major support for Able to Learn Air. Green Mountain Support Services to empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Hello and welcome to this holiday year-end edition, this year-end edition 2019 of Able Dead On Air. I'm Lauren Siler. I'm Arlene Siler. And also today, uh, I'm celebrating uh, my 25th anniversary of um, being a journalist, and um, it's been great uh, doing that for so many years for so many good people. Um, I would like, before we begin this holiday year-end edition of Able Lynn on Air, I just would like to say um, thank you to our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health and Green Mountain Support Services for um, the 2009, uh, to the 2019 uh, year. Uh, we begin uh, with this clip. Um, 25 years ago, uh, I did a show on uh, BronxNet Community um, Access Television on Cablevision um, in the Bronx um, called Special People, Special Issues. And uh, in 2010, I had the pleasure of going to New York City's uh, Comic Con at the Javits Center and interviewing uh, Lou Ferrigno, 1970s Incredible Hulk. Let's take a look at this clip from The Incredible Hulk. Let's take a look at this. Now let's take a look at a great interview that my crew and I had the opportunity to interview some editors, writers, editors and writers of comic books to find out about heroes of the special needs kind. Daredevil, Professor X, and the like at Comic-Con, New York City. Let's take a look and listen to some great advice also from Lou Ferrigno, the former Incredible Hulk. Let's take a look at this great interview. What is one way for kids to think that they're heroes despite it? Well, the best thing you could do is sometimes you have this functional family. The best thing you could do is that learn to deal with your fears. If you have any fears, Think about those fears because whatever you have a passion for, stick with the passion, that will help you deal with the fears and you end up being the hero to yourself and hero to others. No matter what you look like, no matter what kind of a disability you have, and remember one thing, everyone is handicapped one way or another. When I was young, I had dreams and ambitions. I used to read Hulk and Superman comics. I was fascinated with power and I discovered bodybuilding. It was like a springboard for me because I learned about fitness learned to be better friends with my body, gave me admiration and self-confidence to able to achieve my goal. This year in, 2000, uh, in 2019, Able Dinner on Air in January had the pleasure of uh, being interviewed by WCAX Television. Uh, let's take a look at this clip of our um, show, Able Dinner on Air, being interviewed by WCAX. Let's take a look at this. A lot of people told me, no, you can't do that, it wouldn't work, such and such. And 25 years later, we're here. Fighting stereotypes his entire life, a journalist and his wife produced a television show abled and on air. Channel 3's Neliana Ferraro caught up with a TV producer to learn how he's overcoming obstacles. See how that works. Lawrence Seiler has been producing Abled and On Air for six years. The show focuses on the abilities of people with special needs, and guests discuss important issues for their community, like getting jobs and transportation. I wanted to do stories about us. Uh, people with challenges. He's had challenges himself. As Seiler describes it, he deals with cerebral palsy, a neurological disorder that affects muscle coordination. He doesn't suffer from it. I just roll with it and we keep going. He says people have doubted his capabilities, only seeing the cerebral palsy. Disability, dis means not. Ability, when you put that together, means 
you can't do anything. People with special needs can do lots of things. Stigma has not stopped Siler or his wife for that matter. She works to overcome her own challenges, having a learning disability and being a survivor of the 9-11 terrorist attacks in New York City. Running down 68 flights and surviving that whole thing. He says disability goes out the window when they're on set. It's like our own Rocky story because, you know, the whole thing with him with people running up the steps. He just really has a great idea what he wants to have done. Executive Director Rob Chapman says Siler works hard and Orca Media is glad to help. Well, it's part of our mission. It's, you know, it's public access. So anybody in our community who wants to produce a show obviously can come here. For other people with special needs, Siler has some advice. Challenge yourself. If you would like to know more about Orca Media or Lawrence's show, head to our website, WCAX.com. In Montpelier, Neliana Ferraro, Channel 3 News. Uh, look at this clip from GMSS Nursing. That you go through being, uh, being and working with people with developmental disabilities mm -hmm. or you know, in this case, it might be dual diagnosed. So can you explain sure. some of that? Yeah, so Green Mountain Support Services has a lot of different training opportunities, not just for nurses, but right across the board for everyone. We have a class that we take called Therapeutic Options with um, our great staff, Marilyn Carter, who um, teaches that. And she basically talks about approaches to use with individuals with developmental disabilities. It might be um, a therapeutic communication technique. Um, it might be communication strategies um, just to sort of um, make the person that does not have as much experience working with someone with developmental disabilities a little easier. Um, just things that, you know, we've all picked up on the, in the past, um, things of that nature. Um, I'm, I've also been offered through the agency to do a death doula certificate course through the University of Vermont. So Say that again. It's called a death doula course. What exactly um, is that? So that actually helps support the person who is in the middle of end of life care, um, just helps them and supports them with that process and working with them to sort of make that process easier. And it's called death doula. Death doula. So doula is a Greek word. It basically means, I think it's helper or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, so it basically assists someone in their end of life dying process. Since we had this year we had a pleasure interviewing City Council Member Daniel Donna Bay with Mayor Ann Watson. Off air you gave me a long piece of paper to read and that was about the infrastructure of Montpelier and the goals of the city of Montpelier. Can you explain a little bit about that? Sure. So the city recently did a self-evaluation, um, had a consulting firm um, help us uh, sort of figure out what we needed to be doing as a city uh, to be uh, making sure that our uh, public facilities uh, and services were accessible to, um, to people with a variety of uh, disabilities. And so the document that came back was a transition plan for us that was very detailed mm -hmm. and had a lot of very specific recommendations about how the city can be um, doing better, like what kind of uh, infrastructure we would be needing to, uh, to be more fully accessible. infrastructure cracks in the sidewalk, uh, buildings being fixed. Uh. Yeah, it uh, included things like having van accessible parking spaces um, and having um, tactile exit signs and things like that. Um, well, as far as the infrastructure, example, what, uh, there's something in buildings called the grandfather clause, which means if the building is old, it old, they don't necessarily need a ramp or need to be accessible. How does, how can the city infrastructure fix those things or work on fixing that? Good. Well, I was going to say there's a difference between being required to and doing it. Okay. So Go you ahead. can do it, but you may not be legally required if you're in a historical building. Yeah. I think the city's intention is to make things accessible no matter how old they are. Mm -hmm. It may mean that not every building has an elevator, 
but there are services you can provide downstairs to make sure the public can at least be connected to any services upstairs they don't already have. Brett Campbell, Ph.D., Alzheimer's. We're talking to Alzheimer's today, mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about, well, long and short of it, what is the definition of Alzheimer's disease? and how your family dealt with it. Okay, Let's well, start there. first of all, with the doctor, that's, that's a PhD in, in PhD. a totally different field, of, so I'm not any sort of medical expert on Alzheimer's. My experience with it is having been the caretaker, the primary caretaker, caregiver for my mother for the last year and a half of her life while I was watching her uh, succumb to the disease. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a disease that's eating away at your brain. Uh, How so? Well, it's, um, <clears throat> you can, someone showed me one time three scans of brains, right? and uh, it was color, and the red areas show the active areas in the, in the brain. <clears throat> and with a child, you had almost kind of a Swiss cheese thing going on, different, different areas of the brain active, Mm -hmm. As you as they as we grow into adulthood, mm -hmm. those red areas expand. So the uh, third image was the brain of someone suffering Alzheimer's, and it was very much like the child's brain of the small. The only difference being, those are just one, two. Uh, those are going to get smaller, and as, that was when I realized when I saw that that. Um, my mother had always been very immaculate in terms of taking care of the house and such, and now she was leaving a lot of crumbs behind, and we had an ant, ant infestation. Oh, really? <laughs> and um, I would try to talk with her about, Mom, you got to remember to put... And when I saw those, uh, those scans, it made me realize she's all done learning. She's all done learning. And, and changing behaviors. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to just learn that I had to be, work a little harder and uh, be more accepting of her l limitations. And this year, we had the pleasure of, uh, Green Mountain Support Services had the pleasure of sponsoring our program. Let's take a break and look at their public service announcement. Here is Green Mountain Support Services. Do you know an elderly person who doesn't need round-the-clock nursing care, but would benefit from companionship and assistance to get the most out of community, family, and friends? Green Mountain Support Services Adult Family Care Program is looking to serve elderly individuals who may need assistance, working with homeowners to become shared living providers. To find out if this is right for you, go to gmssi.org or call 802-888-7602. This year, we also had the pleasure of interviewing Zachary Hughes from Washington County Mental Health. Let's take a look at his interview. Being used to, um, to promote uh, independent living to the best of um, uh, people's abilities who have mental illness and so on. Okay. Um, for those that don't know, what's the difference between a mental illness and a mental challenge? Is there it's a not, difference? I think it's just a... I think it's a name change, a name difference. Okay. So, um, you know, it'd be like me saying I have a disability versus handicap. Okay. What are some of the new things that are happening with Washington uh, County? Right now, if any? some of the new things uh, I'm aware of right now is that we're working on um, a couple of projects. Uh, one of them is that uh, we're looking, uh, we're working on um, tiny houses in Barrie. People would live in these tiny houses, um, and peers would be part of that. Mm. Um, over in my program... Um, what do you mean by tiny houses? Well, what tiny is? houses are, are if, um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but they're these small houses mm -hmm. that are more economical. Mm -hmm. and they're than regular housing. Right. Now we could take a look at Green Mountain Support, Josh Schmidt Direct Care Services. 
a direct support professional and what do they do? Okay, yeah, so a direct support professional is the, is, is the staff, it's the, it's the person that provides that direct, that direct uh, support, well, because it's a direct support professional, provides that, that direct support to the person that we provide services for, whether it be someone with an intellectual disability, a brain injury, or just a physical disability. Mm -hmm. And what they do is their, their, their job is, uh, is as unique and different as the people we provide services for. So there's not, the only thing they all have in common is that they make sure that the person they're providing services for has access, has access to the same things in their neighborhood and community as anybody else would. For example? Well, for example, if, uh, for example, if, if someone um, is, has a job and needs the help of a direct support professional, if someone is going shopping, anything that anyone would do uh, that you and I would do in the, in the community and someone would still need help to access that through, the, through a direct support professional, that's what they would do. Now, what are some do's and don'ts of a direct support professional? The, ultimately, what they do is that it, it's that Keeping in mind too is that that a direct support professional's job, as I say, is to is to be there and to advocate and to and to make sure that person can access. They are very much like I put it this way: is think about it, um, and this is what Joseph Macbeth, who is the executive director of the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, he makes a good analogy where a direct support professional is like the Sherpa helping somebody climb Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. You know, when somebody succeeds in climbing up Mount Everest, the Sherpas, the Sherpas are not in the picture. Mm -hmm. They are behind that. They were there to make sure the person is able to succeed in their goals and their hopes and their dreams. That's what a direct support professional does. A direct support professional is not a babysitter. Mm -hmm. A direct support professional is, is, is someone who's there to advocate, to assist, and to, and to ensure that people are making, uh, making uh, good decisions. To go through downstreet community housing development over on Taylor Street. Let's take a look at the housing development and the bus depot. Let's take a look at this. accessible and usable by everybody and we're building housing that's needed desperately in uh, downtown Montpelier <clears throat> and it's a uh, energy efficiency building no fossil fuels are going to be used to heat it uh, and it's about building our strong downtown communities and uh, the thing that's so inspiring to me is that there's one obstacle after another that all the folks who had this vision had to overcome and they did, and they did by working together. And it is an example of the power in the, of, of cooperation and persistence. So this is a, a special day where uh, there's a lot to celebrate, and this transit center and this housing is gonna be available for generations. So congratulations to all who played a role. Let's take a look at special needs lawyer Jim Cafferty. I really describe what we do in our office as special needs planning, which is primarily uh, estate and future planning for Vermont families that are affected by disabilities in some way. Okay. And now, it, it, so that runs the gamut. It can go. It does. It, it, uh, what classifies, in terms of your law practice, what classifies? what a disability is, the types of disabilities, because you know, there's a whole lot of fraud out there that people 
you know, as far as disabilities are concerned. So in our office, we're primarily concerned, uh, or primarily we're, we're working on planning. And so uh, we don't do Social Security claims so that would address the, the issues of fraud, possible fraud that you've mentioned. But primarily what we're doing is estate planning for families mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. families in which there is a person with a disability. And as you know, there are there's a wide spectrum of uh, of needs and abilities. And so our planning is tailored to the mm -hmm. needs of that individual family. Typically, that includes uh, all of the traditional estate planning, wills and revocable trusts, health care directives for family members, and then also a special needs trust. By the way, uh, Abel did on air, before we get to the next clip, would like to say um, special congratulations to Kirk Postlewaite uh, of Washington County Mental Health in his new job at uh, Rutland Hospital. Uh, but um, he was on, uh, Kirk Postlewaite was on with Washington County Mental Health talking about the zero suicide program. Let's take a look at this clip. Uh, the mission statement, you know, basically of Washington County Mental Health is um, the promotion of recovery, self-determination, and resilience in the, the people that we serve, and the inclusion of everyone um, in the community um, together, kind of being connected and not having people, you know, have to live kind of on the the outskirts of the community. We really promote a lot of connection and um, just people, you know, seeing each other as, you know, one part of one big community. Okay. The Zero Suicide Project, which is um, both of your area, um, what is the purpose of that? And um, I know suicide is a huge thing. It's a two-part question. I, the second part is I know that su suicide is a huge thing, especially how media plays a role in educating people about suicide. So pros and cons to that particular area. Do you want me to? Yeah, yeah, okay. sure thing. Well, so, you're the media person. <laughs> So we started our Zero Suicide Project back in August of 2018. And 18 or 19? Uh, 18. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So last year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So not quite a year ago. And what our mission and goal in um, promoting Zero Suicide is related to um, helping make sure that everyone has access to um, treatment when they are feeling suicidal um, and are feeling despondent and in crisis. So we're wanting to promote um, screening for folks, so asking questions of folks um, to identify if they are feeling suicidal, have suicidal thoughts, mm -hmm. um, and then promoting treatment specific related to decreasing suicidal ideation and um, intention and plan and um, helping make sure that we have the best services possible for communities when the community has experienced a loss or a death related to suicide. Um, Zero Suicide itself is a national initiative and the, um, they are promoting wanting to have zero suicide, so no deaths by suicide would be our goal. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what our mission of our, our uh, little committee is. And uh, Mary Moulton, our executive director, has signed on passionately uh, to say we want to um, support this project and we want to get the word out about this project. Um, in terms of how the media plays out, uh, that's... There's been many TV yeah. programs, uh, it, both past, present, and future. Uh, prime example, uh, 1950s, I Love Lucy, for example. She put on a Superman cape, pretending she was Superman. There is George Reeves, and Superman jumps out the window, mm -hmm. you know, type of thing. But... Suicide is not a laughing matter. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's the whole point with your project and to educate. Uh, when you take your life, you take your life. Some religions, uh, you know, frown on suicide. It's all through the Bible. But uh, you're, you know, 
you guys educate. So go ahead in terms of like how does how does the media really do that um, when educating, you know, because it's not a laughing matter. Yep. So I think a couple of things. One thing that we're promoting is we want um, people to know, first of all, that Washington County Mental Health has an emergency service number 24 hours a day, seven days a week that folks can access. Um, research shows asking people questions related to are you feeling suicidal, do you have suicidal thoughts, that does not increase a person's um, suicidal ideation, nor can I sort of put that idea in somebody's head. So I think sometimes those are myths that get promoted of we just shouldn't ask about it because otherwise we'll make the person think it. And um, uh, much more um, reasonable is that the person is already having those thoughts and feels isolated and alone. And we want to decrease the stigma related to mental health and also related to suicidal ideation mm -hmm. and increase connection. As uh, describe said. ideation in this case. Yes, is thoughts. thoughts. Um, so I'm thinking about suicide. So in, in my world in emergency services, we break things um, related to suicide into three categories. So I have suicidal thoughts, um, but I'm not thinking about acting on those. I just think. Um, about it. Some folks are experiencing thoughts and they um, have uh, plans and some folks have thoughts, plans, and have acted on those plans. So we look at that of kind of a continuum and where is the person at and we want to be able to intervene at each of those places to keep people alive mm -hmm. and offer treatment and connection. Now let's take another break and listen to Green Mountain Support Services public service announcement. Let's take a look at this public service announcement. I've been a service coordinator with Green Mountain Support Services for two years. It is a wonderful job. I go home at the end of the day and I feel like I have helped someone or made someone's day just by being able to go out and visit them and help them get what they need to be living in a home. GMSS has made me have the ability to become more independent and it has opened up a whole new world for me really and the more I found out about this program the more I liked it. I'm happy. I wasn't happy before and I am now. Now let's take a look at Washington County Mental Health's uh, interview with Mindy Sprague on art and wellness. Let's take a look at this clip. Topic: We will focus on art and people with special needs. Uh, recently, um, we had the able to on air had the opportunity to go to the Berry Opera House and look at the art exhibit that was presented by Washington County Mental Health and many other sponsors. Let's take a look at that art exhibit. Art, the, the arts, all the arts I did. Um, what type of art have you done? Like um, the mask. Mm -hmm. the, 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 if there's one that a real face of mine that I did. Mm -hmm. That that we're gonna see piece, pieces, pieces of, of in it. the video. Uh -huh. And I like I like the one that I did with a real face. That mask one I did was awesome. Mm -hmm. I like. That. Why? Uh, so. Why did you do masks? Was there a reason behind it? Mm. Why did you want to do the mask instead of uh, a regular painting? It's fun. You want to add to that? What What was the reason behind <laughs> it? Okay, so... It's okay. The yeah. art show that we are doing at the Berry Opera House right now It's uh, still in... It's, <laughs> it's, in, it's gone, going on until the 29th of July. Mm -hmm. The original theme was a mask, mm -hmm. to do masks. And I try and introduce different types of art. Oh, you're the art teacher. Ah, OK. Uh, I try, well, I'm one of them. Um, I try and introduce a lot of different things for Mindy to try. Um, and one day, we were working with uh, plaster-impregnated gauze. 
and that's plaster what... Plaster and what? Explain. Pregnated gauze, okay. It's, Which is what? It's gauze that has plaster paris inside of it. Mm -hmm. So what you do is when you first attempt it, um, the subject has Vaseline put all over their face. So, Mindy. Mindy, yes. Or anybody who has it done. They have Vaseline put on their face so that when the gauze hardens, you can get it off without tearing their skin. Mm. So what you do with this gauze, it's got plaster in it, you dip it in water, and then you smooth it on their face. So the contours of their face... And their face doesn't burn nope. while it's happening, okay. Nope, that's why you have the Vaseline on. To, it creates a barrier between the, the plaster and their face. I had the pleasure of interviewing Alexis Kiriak from Washington County Mental Health talking about her art, her wellness, and the reason why she, um, the reason why she paints and the type, of, the type of objects that she paints. Let's take a look at this interview. I'm an artist and... Um, what they, type of art do you do? Uh, fine art, um, female nude, mm -hmm. uh, interiors, mm -hmm. florals, and my work is available online. Um, how do you use your art um, despite, because everybody has challenges, but how do you use your art um, um, to um, go past your disability? I was thinking about that this morning, and I have to say that the, the need, the impulse, the surge of needing to paint mm -hmm. puts me in a place that makes me able to see beyond the troubles. You know, working in the field of special needs takes a lot of care and, um, you know, help and care when it comes to working with special needs. Um, it's extremely important for a living wage when you're working with people with special needs. Yesterday, I had the pleasure, able to learn, I had the pleasure of interviewing Jerry Smith, the producer of a documentary out of the University of Minnesota called Invaluable, about the direct care worker shortage when working with people with special needs. Let's take a, take a look at this trailer and interview with Jerry Smith. Let's take a look at this. Walter, he's very outgoing and he loves to get out into the community and socialize and we go shopping. This is a classic. And he loves rock and roll. Walter has many gifts and Walter has cerebral palsy. He needs support in getting around and meeting people in his community. And he also needs assistance at home with things like fixing meals and getting dressed, budgeting and shopping. Through state and federal programs, Walter and others with intellectual and developmental disabilities have professional staff to provide critically needed support. I tell you what, seeing his confidence, 
and his self-esteem really sore has been just fabulous. So explain to me what's happening today and your premise behind Invite. Well, I'm, I'm here today at the Savoy Theater in Mount Peeler, Vermont. And I, I've been invited by a number of uh, provider organizations supporting people with disabilities to talk about this film that we created called Invaluable. And Invaluable is about the unrecognized, undervalued, and underpaid profession of direct support. Mm -hmm. um, Explain a little bit about the field of direct support professionals and why they are <coughs> under, uh, underpaid and, and undervalued. Sure. Well, we, we have such an interesting, interesting history in this country. Um, there was a time when people that had the label of intellectual disability uh, received no services at all or they lived in an institution, which was, was horrible and dehumanizing. And we changed that. We, we closed most of our institutions and provided supports in the community where people could have the same great life as anybody else could have, mm -hmm. but that requires having support. And that support, as we've defined it, is it's a unique support. It's not just caretaking. It's somebody who can provide relationships in the community, somebody who can provide help in getting a job, maintaining relationships, in addition to the supports that we all need in just taking care of our lives. Mm -hmm. And that profession, that, that, that title is called Direct Support Professional. It's a very complex title. It changes with each person that you support. It requires a tremendous amount of skill, um, a lot of fortitude, a lot of training. Mm -hmm. And for all of that, you would think that this job pays about $50,000 a year, which it deserves. The average wages- It does deserve that. It, does, it absolutely does. But for some reason, it's, it's considered entry level work and the average wages are around $11 an hour, which is criminal. I would like to thank um, Orca Media and our sponsors, Washington County Mental Health and Green Mountain Support Services for a great 2019. Thank you guys for sponsoring. And also, um, I would like to thank Gary Axel Bank of thisisthebronx.com, uh, and uh, Bronx Talk, tele, uh, Bronx Talk on BronxNet, as well as the Bronx Buzz, for the wonderful, uh, for this wonderful uh, Christmas greeting, holiday greeting, and um, thank you again, Gary. And uh, this puts an end to this edition of Able Bit on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm on Seiler. See you in 2020. Hi there, it's Gary Axelbank from This is the Bronx TV and uh, Bronx Talk and uh, the Bronx Buzz on uh, BronxNet Television. I want to wish Larry Seiler and all my good buddies from Abled and On Air a very happy holiday and a happy new year. Uh, because, you know, you got to keep fighting for what's right, and that's what Larry has done since I've known him for years and years before just now. So anyway, all the best. Everybody have a wonderful, beautiful holiday, and uh, let's make 2020 even better than 2019. Happy holidays. Major support for Able and On Air. Green Mountain Support Services. To empower neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Major support also includes Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. <laughs>